Investing £200,000 is not the same as investing £50,000. You need a different strategy and a different mentality. I know this because I've been there myself and I've seen a lot of our clients struggle with this. And yes, it is a first world problem, but investing £200,000 can be stressful. You have so many options and so much to lose that you want to get it right. So in this video, I'm going to show you why investing this amount in property can be so powerful, the step-by-step -step plan that me and our clients have used to invest £200,000, and how you can turn that money into a portfolio that will give you financial freedom. Investing £200,000 into property can be life-changing due to one thing in particular. Let's compare it like for like with an investment in the stock market. And imagine that you invest this much and both of those assets increase by 5% in one year. You might assume that you make the same amount of money on that growth, that is £10,000, and then you've got rental income on one side and dividends on the other. But the beauty of property is that with £200,000, you can use a mortgage as leverage to buy, let's say, £600,000 of property. So if the market does grow by 5% in a year, your wealth grows by £30,000. That's three times more. With the same investment, you get way more buying power and way more potential upside. So what steps do you need to take into consideration? Well, before you spend anything, there are a few basic things that you need to get clear on. We've covered all of these topics in detail in our other videos, which I'll link to below, so I won't go into them in detail now. But as a quick fire summary, figure out if you're buying in your own name or through a limited company, because this makes a huge difference to your tax. Understand the fundamentals of the property market and the basics when it comes to laws and regulations. Get your head around mortgages, the rates, the process, what lenders look for, and how to get comfortable with and control for the risks. And you need to set clear goals about what you want to achieve whether that's monthly income or long-term growth. Now, the four-step strategy that I'm going to show you isn't for short-term gains. So if you're expecting to take your 200,000 and turn it into a million in six months, you can stop watching here. But if you're focused on building long-term wealth over the next 10 to 20 years, then this is exactly how I would invest 200,000 pounds into property right now. I can't tell you how often I've seen people fall at this first hurdle. We once had a client who'd already invested 200,000 pounds before he came to us and told us that he bought 10 properties with it. And on paper, it looked impressive. He could tell his friends that he was a double digit property investor. But when we dug a bit deeper, we discovered a painful truth. Years after investing that money, those properties had seen almost no capital growth. And what's worse is that he was dealing with endless maintenance issues, troublesome tenants, and constant headaches. So even after dealing with all that, he wasn't even making much money. He'd fallen into a classic trap, focusing on the number of properties rather than the quality of his investment. You see, when you've got £200,000 to invest, it's tempting to go to one of two extremes, either trying to buy as many properties as possible to maximize your portfolio or going the opposite route and putting all of your money into a single premium property. But both of those approaches can seriously limit your potential because the true value of your portfolio isn't about how many properties you own. It's about finding that sweet spot where you have enough properties for diversification, but not so many that they become unmanageable. And after years of doing this, we found that there's a balance that tends to work well. For most of our clients who have around this level of cash to spend, that sweet spot tends to be around three properties. And here's why. With £200,000, you can put roughly 65000 into each property, giving you enough for a solid deposit and cover your costs. That way, you'll end up with three properties is worth roughly £200,000 each. If you're used to London prices, that might not sound like much, but we invest in fast-growing parts of the country where a £200,000 property can be at the very high end of the market. And if you sign up to our email list in the description, we'll share which of those areas we're focusing on right now. This approach gives you enough diversification to spread your risk, but keeps your portfolio manageable and focused on quality over quantity. Remember, your portfolio value matters far more than the number of properties, and quality always wins in the long run. Now, of course, this number isn't set in stone because there are other factors, which brings us perfectly to the next crucial decision you'll need to make. Years ago, I bought several properties in Hull, thinking I was getting ahead of the market. The numbers look great. The potential seemed obvious, but 
I was far too early. The growth I expected just didn't materialize. And for years, those properties just sat there, barely moving in value. Thankfully, I'd also invested in other areas that performed much better. And this taught me a valuable lesson. When you're investing £200,000, there's a common belief that you need to pick the perfect location, the one area that's going to outperform everything else. I've seen countless investors get burned because they put all their faith and money into a single location that they were convinced was going to boom. But the reality is different areas perform differently at different times. Some years, city centers outperform everything else. Other years, it's the commuter towns that see the biggest gains. And sometimes there's a city that seems to have everything going for it, but then it's its neighbor that ends up getting the growth years earlier. This is where having 200,000 pounds to play with gives you a unique advantage because you have enough capital to do something that most investors can't. You can actually choose whether to concentrate or to spread your investments. Both approaches can work, but you need to know why you're making that choice. If you're doing a lot of the management yourself, keeping properties close together makes perfect sense. But if you're setting up a hands-off portfolio, then I'd be more open to spreading my investments a bit more. And you can mix up city centers and commuter areas, or even between houses and flats to diversify even further. So you don't have the pressure of making a big bet and getting it exactly right. The great thing is this can help you to avoid that analysis is paralysis that keeps so many investors stuck on the sidelines. And actually, this decision ties directly into something even more important, something that most investors with £200,000 to spend get completely wrong. So back in 2016, I bought a flat in Nottingham. Nothing spectacular, but in a good location and with strong tenant demand. When I first bought it, the rent was £800 per month. And today, that same property brings in £1,300. Now, some investors might have overlooked this property initially because it didn't have the best rental yield, nor was it the shiniest and most exciting investment. And when you have £200,000 sitting in your account, there's this overwhelming pressure to maximise your returns from day one. And I get it. When you're investing this kind of money, you want to believe that you've done the right thing. And the best way to get that belief is to see immediate results. But chances are an extra £200 per month won't make a huge difference to your lifestyle. What will make a difference is what happens to your investment over the next 5, 10, 15 years. Because the real wealth in property isn't made from your first year's returns. It's made in the steady growth of both property value and rental income over time. And when you have £200,000 to invest, you're in a unique position to prioritise this long-term growth. So don't turn down a solid deal just because the initial cash flow isn't spectacular. Maybe it produces a yield, which is the annual rent divided by the purchase price, of 6%. Fine, but in no way spectacular. Yet over time, the rent goes up. And of course, the price you bought it for never changes. So without doing anything, the numbers get better every year. If it has everything else you're looking for, location, potential for growth, good tenant demand, that's what really matters. Believe me, when you start looking at deals this way, everything changes. Instead of stressing about squeezing every possible pound of profit in year one, you'll be positioning yourself for the kind of steady, reliable growth that builds real wealth over time. And speaking of long-term thinking, there's one final thing you need to know about investing this kind of money. And it's probably the most important lesson that you'll learn in this video. As a newbie investor, I once spent an entire day waiting for a washing machine to be delivered to one of my properties. Just sitting there, watching the clock tick by, getting more and more frustrated. And this is an all too common trap. I see it happen all the time with our clients. They start out excited about building a property portfolio, but six months later, they're spending their weekends fixing leaky taps and chasing late rental payments. But here's the thing, when you have this level of investment, you're not just buying properties, you're building a business. And like any successful business owner, you need to think carefully about how you spend your time. Your focus needs to be on making smart investment decisions, not doing jobs that someone else could handle for £20 an hour. The most successful property investors we work with treat their portfolio like what it is, an investment and a business. They set up systems and teams to handle the day-to-day -day operations so they can focus on the decisions that actually move the needle. And when you take this approach, your portfolio doesn't just perform better, it also gives you the one thing most property investors never achieve, 
true financial freedom. But most new investors struggle putting the systems in place to get their property business set up and fall into the same time trap that I was stuck in. So check out this video next where I explain all the systems I use to manage my million pound portfolio in just one hour per month.